for supporting the Fable and Folly Network. Here's another show we know you'll love. Hello, hello, I'm Malik. I'm Jamie. And this is World Gone Wrong, where we discuss the unprecedented times we're living through. Can your manager still schedule you for night shifts after that werewolf bit you? My ex-boyfriend was replaced by an alien body snatcher, but I think I like him better now. Who is this dude showing up in everyone's old pictures? My friend says the sewer alligators are reading maps now. When did the kudzu start making that humming sound? We are just your normal millennial roommates processing our feelings about a chaotic world in front of some microphones. World Gone Wrong, a new fiction podcast from Audacious Machine Creative, creators of Unwell, a Midwestern Gothic mystery. Learn more at audaciousmachinecreative.com. Find World Gone Wrong in all the regular places you find podcasts. I love you so much. (laughs) I mean, you could like up the energy a little bit. You could up the energy. I actually don't take notes. Ah! (laughs) (laughs) That was good. (laughs) I'm just kidding. You sounded great. So did you. (laughs) Midnight Burger will always be free to listen to, but it's not free to make. So please consider supporting us by subscribing on Supporting Cast, Patreon, or Apple Podcasts. For early access, ad-free shows, exclusive content, and our enduring gratitude, just follow any of the links in the show notes for this episode. to meet you. What am I doing here, Sluggo? My boss wants to meet with you. Who's that? Right this way. Is there an organism somewhere inside all that metal? Nope. I'm 100% bot. I'm judging by your size that your main function is to just be big. Pretty much. BTG-56 model. A thugbot. I don't imagine something called a thugbot is given many cognitive freedoms. We get a little leeway. Really? For example... My operator told me to tolerate a little bit of chit-chat, but to then make sure and get your ass to this meeting. So, let's move. What am I doing here, and who am I meeting with? And where are my friends? How about we get you to this meeting, and you can ask all the questions you want then? (sighs) Fine. Oh, and I've heard talk of your tech work up close, so keep your distance or I'll have to engage my primary function of beating things to a pulp. Got it. Right this way. So, I'm on Galice. Yes. Did you think you ended up in some other casino that you stole millions from? This way. Am I supposed to be... Impressed with this? Intimidated by this? <laughs> I'm confused. Maybe both. Okay. Well, hey, uh, I've never seen your model of Thugbot before. What you got going on there, pal? Funny you should say that. I am not actually a Thugbot. I am a modded and repurposed kitchen prep bot. Why do that? Why not just get a Thugbot? My operator appreciated my vast assortment of knives. Ah. Uh. I see. Thugbots are great, but they are a bit on the slow side. 
A modified kitchen bot like myself is faster and very useful if the operator would like for someone to be ventilated. Oh, great. Any chance you're gonna tell me where Leif and Des are? Nope. Hmm? Verge. Thank fuck. Are you okay? I'm fine. Are, are you okay? Well, I'm being held captive by Dr. Ginsu over here. Hello! Have so. you seen Des? No, it's just me in here. I hope he's alright. Good evening, I will be your waiter. Would you like an aperitif? What? Due to the presence of an earthling, our dinner with this evening will be a traditional five-course meal. Before the meal, we begin with aperitifs. Would you like aperitif? What the fuck is happening? Uh, nothing for us, thanks. Very well. So, is this who I think it is? What was their name? Loaf Tracks. And how reasonable would you say this Loaf Tracks is? When I describe someone as the most notorious space pirate in the history of the triad, does the word reasonable sound right to you? No. We're fucked right now. You realize that, right? Don't panic. Oh. Okay. Hey, kids! How are we all doing this evening? Allow me to welcome you to The Kingpin, the Triad's premier destination for gambling and special events. Of course, you've been here before, as we both know, but look, let me really roll out the red carpet this time. You must be Loaf Tracks. <laughs> That's not Loaf Tracks. That's adorable. He doesn't know anything, does he? Oh, he really doesn't. <laughs> must be nice, right? As a vapian, I mean, none of that preloaded cultural garbage. Didn't have a worried mother telling him to stay away from vapians. Well, the thing is, the warning would have just made it hotter, so... I'm also a little disappointed. Oh, so you two are... You... I see. Well, that's sweet. You're like... Who are those two earthlings? They went on the crime spree, the America robbing the banks. Oh, Bonnie and Clyde. Yes! You were like Bonnie and Clyde. Didn't end well for them either, did it? Where's Des? Not to worry. Your Truscan friend is fine. Uh, untouchable, really. Turns out he's the son of a very influential member of the Truscan Shipbuilders Union. <laughs> we may be a powerful organization, but we are not getting on the bad side of Trusk. You do that, your ships suddenly start falling apart going through a warp gate. I booked him a private cruiser back home. He'll be fine. Good. You too, however. <laughs> you too. What am I going to do with you two? Could we maybe get an introduction? Oh, my. Where are my manners? My name is Minsky. I'm a representative of my client's organization. I represent them in all things for this meeting. My client runs a very successful organization and asks that I represent them in various matters that don't require their personal touch. <laughs> You're a lawyer. That would be the earthling way of putting it, yes. We present you with our first course, a Telegio cheese and mission fig tartan. Please enjoy. Please enjoy. Very hard to get the mission figs out here. We're not very hungry, yes. I'm sure you can imagine. It's about perspective, isn't it? You may not be hungry if you're preoccupied with how you're going to get out of the particular predicament you find yourself in. But you see, if this was the last meal you were ever going to have, I think you'd want to enjoy these final moments, wouldn't you? Just to give you a cheat sheet, I've done this particular five-course meal before. It's in the appetizer course where my dining companion assures me that they can get us our money back. And then it's four more courses as they slowly realize that it's not about the money. No. No, it's not. It's never about the money. Money is everywhere. The money that you stole from us will make it back by the end of business today. The money isn't the point. It's about the message, Leaf. What's the message we're sending if we're just going to let you steal from us? You see, we're at a very crucial time in our organization 
We're making a big push across the system right now. People are wondering if we can pull it off. Can we really control it all? Can we run the table? That's what everybody's asking right now. You answer that question a million times in a million ways. And hunting down a microscopic organization like yours because they stole an amount of money from us that is really just a rounding error? That is one of the many ways that we say to the triad, yes, yes, we can and will run the whole table. Not a fan of the figs? Mater D, let's move on to the next course, please. For our second course, we present Mole Noir de Coco, steamed mussels within white wine, fennel, and coconut cream broth, served with garlic confit crusty baguette. Please enjoy. Mussels. Mussels. Remind me of home. See, I was born on a ruined planet. Mussels were a big part of our diet because they were the only thing that could survive in our oceans. You make yourself a lot of promises when you come from humble beginnings. Lots of deals with the devil, as an earthling would say. You swear a lot of things to yourself. Things like, I will never eat fucking mussels again for as long as I live. Take this away. Can we skip to the end of this, please? Ah, I see. The tough guy approach. You see that death is inevitable, so you grab hold of the only thing left that you can control. How that death happens. I'm afraid you won't be granted that leaf. I'm putting on this dinner, not you. We can get you your money back, and then some. Leaf. I just did a whole thing about how the money is irrelevant. Well, if there's anything else you need from us, other than for us to be dead, I'd like to know about it, please. Good! Negotiation! This is where I really excel. I'm a deal maker, Leaf. This strong arm routine is really just a byproduct of doing business. So many necessary evils. You'd like to know if there's something you can get me that someone else can't. Yes. In short, no. Which is not to say I don't enjoy your existence, Leaf. There's a sideshow aspect to it that I love. Come one, come all, see the living, breathing earthling. That's fun. But we're not running a circus. Oh, I mean, I'm lying. We actually do run a circus outside of Cygnus, but you understand the analogy. Uh, look, you have nothing that you can offer our organization, Leaf. Like the money you stole, you are a rounding error. <laughs> this is always a fun moment. You're a proud person, I can tell, and you've reached that moment where you're debating whether or not to begin begging for your life. Kobe salad, mixed greens with persimmon, green bean, a palm dressed in a walnut sherry wine vignette topped with shaved fromage de Comte. Enjoy. Lovely. Have some greens. They're good for you. I appreciate the offer, Leaf. I appreciate you trying to make things right in earnest. But we want for very few things in this organization. Our wish list is very small. Do you know what a walrus is? Sure. Well, the other day, some strange group brought a walrus from Earth to the halls of the High King of Wilsonite. So we'd like to know a little bit more about whatever the heck was going on there. So that's on the list. Um, what else? Oh, right. Right now... Somewhere out there in the system is a very creative hacker, whoever they are. They've made inroads into the TED Empire's network like no one has before, and no one knows who they are. The only thing we know is their username, Death the Kid. Getting our hands on that hacker, that's definitely on the list. But you, no, there's nothing that you can help me out with. Nothing you can help me out with. 
Fuck. Your friend, on the other hand, well, that's a different story. What do you mean? Leaf. Your little partner in crime is worth far more than any of the money you stole from us. You realize that, don't you? I don't. Vapians. They're incredibly valuable. In the arenas we work in, you're always doing business with Vapians. You can't avoid it. Vapians have underworld networks far more vast than ours, and they have no allegiances except to themselves. They can get you anything you need at any time. They're very dangerous in a firefight, and they're almost impossible to catch. And now I've got one. There's no criminal outfit out there that has a Vapian working for them. This is a big moment for our organization. I'm glad you're here to see it, Leaf. <laughs> There's just no way Verge is going to work for you. You must know that. B -b 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 hang on now. I haven't given you the full pitch. See, a lot of people see our organization as the same messy, chaotic space pirates of the past. But we really plan on changing the piracy game. Bring up the screen. What happens when I say the word piracy to you? What do you think? Chaotic raiders creating pandemonium across an entire system? Maybe. But what if it wasn't just that? What if when I say the word piracy to you, you had other words come to mind? Words like freedom, enterprise, Innovation, that's Love Track's goal. We aim to change the game, to go from piracy to primacy. As you can see on the map behind me, Love Tracks now controls 43% of the crime in the triad. The Milky Way is ours. And now we're moving into Andromeda. Nobody said we could control the Milky Way. We proved them wrong, and we plan to do the same with Andromeda and then the Triangulum. Emperor Bug Bug tried this before. And Emperor Bug Bug is a true inspiration to today's pirate, but uh, <laughs> due respect, Bug Bug did not have the vision that Loaf Tracks has today. Bug Bug wasn't just a pirate, he was a king. He had a throne, a castle, a planet. He was an easy guy to find. So when the Ted Empire began to sweep across the triad, they knew exactly where to find their greatest threat. Our organization doesn't have that problem. Why doesn't your organization have that problem? I'm glad you asked, Leaf. To defeat the beast, you must cut off its head, and our head cannot be found because of this. Is that? As a young pirate, Loaf Tracks made a shocking discovery in a remote star system on the edge of the Milky Way. This is, of course, an artist's rendering. We won't allow the real one to be photographed. But what does that look like to you, Leaf? It's a... a brain. That's right! It's black. It's black! and entirely made of glass. It's the size of a moon. A moon-sized, brain-shaped hunk of black glass orbiting a distant neutron star, barely visible to the naked eye and undetectable to long-range scanners. The perfect place for a pirate's hideout. We call it the Galaxy Brain. That's fascinating. You remember you're about to be killed, right? We have no idea what it is, where it came from, but we do know that it's ours. This is the seat of a new Empire Verge, and you could be part of it all. It's weird that you're giving us a sales pitch for something you're forcing on us. Uh, despite all of this, I'm sure the answer is still no. Funny you said that, Leaf, while Verge over there has been very silent. You're probably thinking that Verge would rather die than work for someone like me. And you're right. They would rather die. But they won't. What is it you say, Verge? How do Vapians say 
hello and goodbye to each other. Vapus veia. Vapus veia. Vapus lives. Every vapian sticks to one idea and one idea only. Survive. They were nearly wiped out in the vapian collapse and they are very slow to reproduce. So they say, survival at all costs, even if survival is a nightmare. You're going to love working for us, Verge. I'm sure you'll eventually forgive us for killing Leaf. Eh, maybe you won't. It doesn't matter. Because even if you don't, you'll still be working for us. <sighs> Let's move this along, shall we? Next course. Leaf, you've got this look on your face, racking your brain to see if there's anything up your sleeve. There's nothing up your sleeves. Our entrees this evening, pensier duck breast with a pomegranate vin rouge sauce, butternut squash with sage-infused brown butter, roasted Brussels sprouts and pumpkin seeds tossed in a red wine vinegar de miel gastrique. Enjoy. What the hell? It's actually my boot heel. Today's episode is brought to you by Factor. Look, I know all these ads about meal delivery services usually begin by someone saying that you don't have time in your day to cook good food. But seriously, you don't have time in your day to cook good food. Us included. We're over here making Midnight Burger all the time, and you're over there doing all those things that you're doing all the time. And if you're anything like us, you lean a little bit too hard on your local takeout places. They may be great, but it's always expensive, and you always end up ordering the cheesy fries when maybe you shouldn't have. Now, if this is the case for you, then maybe give Factor a try. In our Factor box, we get things like creamy pesto pork chop, sun-dried tomato chicken with zucchini noodles, garlic mushroom chicken thighs with cauliflower mash, Caribbean tofu scramble, things I would never cook at home, and things that would be very expensive at the takeout place. Every Tuesday, it comes in this space-age, freezer-packed box, and the meals are ready in two minutes. There's Calorie Smart, there's Protein Plus, Keto, there's more than 60 different add-ons you can use to customize your box. It's really great. So, if you're ready to give Factor a shot, head to factormeals.com slash burger50 and use the code burger50 to get 50% off. That's code burger50 at factormeals.com slash burger50 to get 50% off. Attention, Leaf. That was a fun little show you put on back there. It's okay. I hated that waiter anyway. <laughs> so judgmental, no matter what I order. Anyway, so here we are. You're on the run in the casino. How do we see this ending, Leaf? I've got all the exits covered. The dock bay is in lockdown. Where are we going with this? What was that back there? Microwave drill. It melts down minor electronic circuits. It wasn't working on the big ones, but it worked on the waiter bot. Thank you for being a genius, but what do we do now? I don't know. We made it out of that room, but we're still trapped in the casino. We can't go back to Nancy. They're going to be watching. I know. Hang on. This looks like a mainframe room. Sh sure. I really thought we were fucked back there. We still may be. Okay, this looks like something I can work with. What are you going to do? I don't know yet. You can see the docking bay from the hallway, right? Yeah. Okay, go see if there's something out there we can steal. Something small enough to slip through the barricade. Okay. Leave. Leave. Come on. Can we talk about this? I mean, I'm still going to kill you. But now I'm going to have to torture you and kill you. Uh, nobody wants that. Come on. Press the button on the nearest panel and let's talk about this. Come on. Come on. Don't be a sour puss. Hi there. Leaf! Leaf, what are you doing? You're just making a mess now. You excel at negotiation. That's what you said. 
I really do leave. I'm a humble person, but I can safely say that about myself. I'd like to propose a deal. I like where your head's at, but you're not in the strongest position right now. All the exits are blocked, the docking port is locked down, you currently have nothing to offer me. At least nothing that I can't just take. Verge is that valuable to you, huh? Oh, yes, leave. A Vapian in our organization would be a big get for us. Let's tease that out for a minute. Sure, sure. <laughs> I'm listening. Verge excels at getting things for people. Great at smuggling. Very clandestine. All of those things, yes. Do you have trouble getting things? Are there things you need that you can't get? No. I would not say that. You're a large organization. A lot of resources. Surely you can get anything that a Vapian would be able to get for you. You're able to do all the things that a Vapian would do. Why do you need a Vapian? I hear that. I do. Certainly, having a Vapian in our organization wouldn't be a transformational moment for us. So having a Vapian would be more of a symbolic victory? In a certain sense, yes. But let's not discard symbols, Leaf. They're not without their value. There's no doubt about it. It's a feather in your cap, though. It's not a new cap altogether. True, but it's an important feather... And Loaf Tracks does love feathers. And since we've established that, can we go back to your wish list? Where are we going with this leaf? Stay with me. On your wish list was a Vapian, some sort of weird thing about a walrus, and then there was the hacker. Yes, Death the Kid, that's a big one. You were telling me this mysterious hacker can, unlike Verge, do things you currently can't do. This is true. A more transformational acquisition. Absolutely. I think we could really take things to the next level if we were able to screw with the TED system like this hacker seems to be able to do. Leaf, why are we talking about this? Well, I can give you the hacker. Say more. I'm saying I can give you something more valuable than Verge. This just sounds like stalling to me. How do you expect me to believe you can deliver death the kid to us because i am death the kid get the fuck out of here it's true the notorious hacker that is currently carving up the ted empire's network is an earthling genius always comes from the unlikeliest of places doesn't it leaf you're stalling i'm not well i can't just take your word for it leaf this is not how that works in 10 seconds Everyone on the casino floor is going to hit the jackpot. Everyone. Everyone. That can't be done, Leaf. Interesting. You know what I have a problem with? Commitment. I don't mean that in the usual way. I'm not scared of relationships or some sort of simplistic romantic cliché. I have a problem with being one thing. Picking a lane. I know Earth is a backwater caveman convention, but as it turns out, I was one of the smartest guys living there. So smart that I invented something that would change everything. At the bottom of an abandoned gold mine, I performed a miracle. I pulled energy out of nothing. Like a magic trick. A $30 million magic trick. The first time my team saw all the lights come up on the energy register, they all cheered, lost their minds. We had just changed the world. In that moment of monumental change, all I remember is fear. It was terrifying for me because I suddenly realized, oh no, I'm going to have to be the unlimited energy guy for the rest of my life. I would have to make speeches and inspire people and have books written about me. What if I didn't want to be that guy? 
What if I just wanted to make something cool and then move on? Luckily, the Teds came along and offered us all a deal. So then, I went from the unlimited energy guy to the galactic drifter guy. Sailing the stars, not a care in the world. A state of bliss. It's funny, isn't it? In your happiest state, you can still hear another voice. A voice in your head pulling you somewhere else. This voice was saying, The Teds. They bought and sold you. You hate that, don't you? You really want to do something about that, don't you? So, on long flights while Verge was asleep, I would tap into their systems and start looking for the loose threads. You'd be surprised, the things I found in there. Let Verge go, and you can have me. Interesting. Let's keep talking. Sure. Let's say you're not fucking with me. I'm not fucking with you. Let's say I believe you. You should believe me. I let Verge go. And I get you. That's what I'm proposing, yes. You, who are, allegedly, Death the Kid. That's right. I don't know, Leaf. The jackpots all at once are impressive, but... I need a little more. Okay. In three minutes, another jackpot is going to hit on the casino floor unless I stop it. If this one hits, they will keep coming every 90 seconds until the casino runs out of money. Then it will access the networks of your other casinos, and will start the process on their casino floors as well. This process will continue until every one of your casinos has given away all its money. <laughs> Leave. Come on, what am I thinking right now? You're thinking I have a Vapian and Death the Kid under my roof. Why don't I grab them both? That is what I'm thinking. <laughs> because in three minutes, not even I can stop the jackpots from happening. It'll keep going until it drains the entire casino system. So you could try and catch us both, but it's going to cost you a lot of money. Maybe I think you're worth it, Leaf. I'm already giving myself up. Is Verge worth it? Interesting. Three minutes is not a long time, by the way. Classic move, putting a clock on it. You should know what you're getting yourself into, Leaf. Should I? You come work for us. That's it. It's the last job you'll ever take. We'll own you. I know. You're doing all this to save a person you'll never see again. If I let Verge go, they'll need to disappear, Leaf. I can't have someone who escaped us showing their face in the usual haunts. You're running out of time. I can't let Verge go outright but I can give them a head start. How long? Sunrise. That'll work. Do we have a deal? We have a deal. Shut down the fire sale on the casino floor, please. It's shut down. This is coming to you rather easily, Leaf. I was expecting more hand-wringing about leaving your paramour behind. Your hideout. The galaxy brain? I know where it came from. <laughs> Is that right? There's a volcano on Earth called Vesuvius. About 2,000 years ago, it erupted and instantly killed everyone in the nearby city. They find some pretty amazing things in the ruins. One thing they found was brain matter. You wouldn't think brains could survive a volcanic blast, but... They were preserved by a process called vitrification. Their skulls acted like a microwave, instantly superheating their brains and turning them into black glass. That hideout of yours is orbiting a neutron star, which means at one point it was a star that went into supernova. Millions of years ago, there was an organism orbiting that star. An organism the size of a moon 
the supernova obliterated its body and left its massive, vitrified brain behind. Your galaxy brain is literally a brain. That's a fascinating theory. And what does that have to do with you joining our ranks, Leaf? I have to see it. a bit by the void, have you? The wine-dark sea calls you away? Sure, I suppose. Okay. Well, this has been a pleasure. Do me a favor, steal a ship, would you? I don't want it looking like I let you go. Sure. Ow! Oh, bastard. How's it coming? I've almost got it. Hey, Verge. Oh, shit. Hey there. You picked an awful nice ship to steal. Oh, fuck. I was impressed by the effort, weren't you two? We really were. I was rooting for you. Look, I promise I will willingly come work for you if you just let him go. Okay? You kids, you're killing me. Don't make me believe in love, please, Verge. Not to worry. Everything's gonna be fine. What is he talking about? I, uh... Leif. I made a deal. What are you talking about? Remember how you told me to stop poking around in the TED network? Yes. Well, I didn't. Leif. That hacker he's looking for, Death the Kid, it's me. I've been raiding their network while you're asleep. Wait. Yeah, I'm gonna rip the band-aid off. Leaf works for us now, he swapped himself for you. He now works for us forever and you're free to go. Oh, also you are technically escaping right now so that I don't get thrown in the meat grinder for letting you go. Also, because you're escaping, if we ever see you again, we will kill you. I don't know where you vapians hide when you go to ground, but I'd go there. For a very, very long time. So, yes, let's let it all sink in. This is the last time you're going to see Leaf. Sorry, am I being unceremonious about this? Give us a second, please. What did you do? Went for the option where we both live. We, we were about to escape. No, we weren't. We were going to get shot down as soon as we tried to leave. You did I don't know that. I do. And so do you. It was the end of the line. We had to jump tracks. Mm -mm. It can't end this way. It was about to end in a much worse way. Why didn't you say anything about this plan? What would you have said? I can't believe this is happening. Verge. Verge. We're criminals. The odds of this happening were actually pretty high. Don't make jokes now, please. I'm I'm sorry. I guess I'm just happy I'm not going to die and you're not going to be a slave. Tick tock, Leaf. D- did you want this to happen? We were screwed, Verge. We've been screwed before and managed to unscrew ourselves. Are you pissed at me for saving both of us? <laughs> You've got until sunrise to get somewhere they can't find you. Meet me. Where? Where we first met. They're gonna be watching me. Figure it out. One Earth week. Okay. Hey, Minsky. Yeah? If I ever see you again, I'm gonna kill you. Oh, my goodness. Okay. See you then. I've always felt that the one who got away is an important force in any sentient being's life. Absolutely. So true, so true. I guess I'll find out. So, you're welcome. What happens now? Now we begin the onboarding process. Which entails 
Well, it's interesting, Leaf. You know, I've worked for a lot of people in this particular sector of the economy, and I have to say, Loaf Tracks is really an innovator in terms of personnel management. What? As I said before, this is the last job you'll ever have. So before you officially start with us, Loaf Tracks wants you to take some time. Take some time? That's right. See some old friends, some family. Say some goodbyes if you need to. Seriously? Sure, yeah. It's important. Touch base with the old life before you start the new. What's stopping me from running? Nothing at all. Loaf Track says it's a great way to eliminate idiots from our organization. Because only idiots try to run. I'll send you some information, be it a particular dock, at a particular station, at a particular time. Follow the instructions, your old life ends, and a new one begins. Don't follow the instructions, your life just ends. It's going to be a pleasure working with you. Music from Young Leaf comes from the album Kids Fill the Floor by our dear friends Freesha. Their music is available to stream on all platforms and is available for purchase on Bandcamp. So please do all of those things. Young Leaf is brought to you in part by our Monte Cristo level and above supporters. Wilson, Billy, Bertbert, Bethany, Second Bethany, Siobhan Delilah Rose, Dan Bowman, Casper's number one fan, Stu, Nan McVicker, Rusty Accord, A Bug Named Nat, Colby Jack, Sparker, Daniel L., Mitzi Lou, Life is Liminal, The Art Sherpa, G. Longhorn, Lucrezia, Amy Pollard, Zahony Vera, Brick Hausdorf, The Waiting Pool Pirates, Past Prologue, Little Ball of Odd, Dr. Punt Gusher Esquire, Chelsea G., Tanya Ricardo, Mel Momberg, Cosmic Shrug, Osvaldo Simeone, Kingpin, Nesbell, Boodles, Rubius Fuzzlebutt, Miss Chris Still Making Sandwiches, Hot Plate of Biscuits and Gravy, Banshee Ranch, Victor in Cincinnati, Kurt Bartnick, St. Fu, Roman Ronan, D. Fox, Matt Mosby, Nicole Colangelo, The Real Dirt Fairy, Haya Buddha, Lady Karma, The Dread Pirate Fred Fredberger, Daniel Caprett, Ryan Ortega, Rogue, Liz Laser Eyes, Ivy, Cole, Your Favorite Kenny, Reaper, SCRB Mark 11, Robert Oliveri, Adrian Ramirez, Berserking Off, Genuine Jacob, Snoogans, Kelly Jane Danke, Ambient Drifting Man 80, Mossy, Stephen Robin Poole, Stephen the CPA, Pathos, Amanda Marie Catherine, The Something Something Detective Agency, Andrea Strick, Virgo Aries Infinity, Sir Cat Dad, The Amburglar, Velocicate, Gracefully Impaired, A Cryptid Wearing a Cool Tie, Jack Lane, Phantom Turtle, Books Shift Managed, Aaron the Optimist, Andrew Barner, Camel Pope, Clara Olson, Justine Burbank, Sunny D Anomaly, Peachy Zatoichi, Chris Hancock, Caravan Shaker, Trinket Coralie, Disco Funkslinger, Deli Cruz, Edgy Steve, Incorrigible Ross, Hashtag Nissan Acura, Grilled Chicken Sando, Quilandis, Miss May aka Heather Burland, Potato Nation, La Cockney Francaise, Alice Malice, Podge Art, Rudra, Starlight, Corrine Sabrantha, Thomas Stolen, Sean Wright, Michael Christian, Wandering Aquarius, Tarvok Stormbringer, Techno Ranger Rick, Magnificent Hog Beast, Charmé, Kyle of Light, Broccolini, Theo Alex Dean, Flat Doug, Purple Saline, The Wondrous Methazophon, Antigone Brickman, Nicole 23, Saren Far Beyond the Stars, Gen C, Leia B, Samira, Xavier Sage, Blargo Blargo Blargo, Onyx Rose, Death the Kid, Churlington Beastcoat, Tamara Oliver, Kelsey Home, Jackie Wavelet, Marissa, Damien the Goddamn Time Lawyer, Terry, Magic Pony, Jay Snoozton, Maggie's Yarm, Rebecca Trossel, Zealous Pragma, Mallory May, Aaron Mitchell, Raven the Neko Queen, Ashley Chapel Peoples, Melvis Gray Mystery, Joshua Cody, Om Vega, Codex Typo, Al Cave, Kevin Batten, Creator 67, Sono Nasuno, John Dew, Courtney Dupona, John Pruitt, Ruth McCormick, Stuck in Derplahoma, It's Just Blake, The Pearsons, Tired Pirate Muffin, 
J.R. the Hiker Bear, Fiona Malisey, Menlore, Rachel Rachelson, Tracy, Calibri, The Green Street Major, Posh Baby Rentals Florida, Nate, Three Legs Are Perfectly Good, Hippo, Maloran, Brun Mycelil, Kara, Late Indeed Again, Ian Hertzler, Mother of Thor, Cryptesia, Anth Anomaly, Special K, Laura, Ryan Abbey, Best Buds Danny and M, Captain Blep, Finnegan Robert, Sarah Bergenholtz, Paul A. Johnson, Hunter B, Zacky Nat, Big Whiskey, Coat Full of Owls, Naya, Anna, Ben and Jessica, Dandy Bay, CC Ryder, K Mac, the artist formerly known as Mouse Cop, Ignatius Mortimer Mean, Eli the Electrician, Adelaide Dark, Good God There Are So Many Names, Curtis Charles Sr., David Biarini, Dancing Dog Dreams, Beatrice Bodacious, and Existentially Exhausted Bean. The Fable and Folly Network, where fiction producers flourish. It happened in the quiet town of Podunk, an ages-old family mystery. What happened with Great Grandpa? Why won't you talk about it? Because there's nothing to say, Ninten. Begets an unprecedented paranormal event. Help, brother! Ah! Poltergeists. My lamp attacked me. It was hovering the air. It unplugged itself and came at me. Mind control. Why is that crow smoking a cigarette? Okay, we're playing inside today. Zombies. I could have gotten out of here on my own. You were hiding in a coffin. It was a good disguise. Extraterrestrials. You've seen them too? I've been observing them for days. <laughs> I beat up aliens with my baseball bat. Children with psychokinetic powers. I let that little light of mine shine, Mama. And it melted the darkness away. And that's just the beginning. Introducing Mother She Wrote, a travelogue diary through the biggest cult phenomena in video game history, the Mother series, as it's called in Japan, and Earthbound, as it's called everywhere else. Each episode, we recount the story through immersive audio drama as it's lived by the characters, unpacking the surreal adventures, tear-jerking moments, and what it all means. If you're new to the series, we'll take you beyond the controller and into the story. And if you're a longtime fan, relive these tales like never before and learn fascinating new facts about your favorite games. Find Mother She Wrote on your favorite podcast player and at MotherSheWrote.Earth.